In this video, we'll learn to work out the probability of combined events, including the use of diagrams and tables. So I've got two objects. I've got a spinner and a coin. We should be okay to work out the probability of getting one in the spinner or two or three or four. And the probability of each of them is a quarter. And with a coin, we can get head or tail. So the probability of getting head is half and the probability of getting tail is half. So what we'll look at in this video will be the probability of combined events. So events from both of these two. For example, what's the probability of getting a three and tail? What's the probability of getting a two and heads? So what we're looking at this time around is independent events because combined events can be dependent and independent. Why are these independent? Because whatever you get with a spinner does not impact what you get with a coin. We'll later on look at the dependent events. So starting off with these two. What could I get with a spinner? What are the possibilities? I could get a one. So if the spinner lands on one, that's what I would have. So I'd have one and then maybe heads or one and tail. They're both possible. So with a one on the spinner, I could have then a head or a tail here. And these are two possible events. And then if I get two with a spinner, I could have heads with the coin and I could have tails as well. So any of them two are possible. And of course, if the spinner lands on three, I could have three and heads or I could have three and tails. And if the spinner lands on four, I could have four and heads and I could have four and tails. So any of them are possible. So as you've, see, as you've just seen, we've looked at all the possible outcomes for both of these two. And what we call this is a listing. And in fact, it's a systematic listing because we looked at each outcome here. That would be a one. And then we looked at the possibilities for the coin as well. And there were two. So one and head and one and tail. Two and head and two and tail. Two and head, three and head and three and tail. Four and head and four and tail. So we looked at them in turn. And that's what we call systematic listing. Now there are other ways we could have work this out and I'll look at those both. So the possible outcomes for the spinner would be getting a one, two, three or four. These are the only possibilities. And for the coin, it's either heads or tails. So on one side, one of the objects and on the other side, the other object. So I could have one if I spin the spinner first, I could have one and heads or I could have one and tails. I could have two and heads or two and tails. Three and heads, three and tails. Four and heads, four and tails. And that matches exactly all these outcomes that we have here. Now, the other way 
we could show the same thing would be through a tree diagram. This is a two-way table. This was a listing. Now we'll look at the tree diagram. So it looks like branches of a tree. So let's start off. What are the possibilities for the spinner? What could we get? There are four and we could have a one, two, three or four. If we get a one, what could we get with the coin? We could get either heads or tails. If we get a two with a spinner, what can we get with a coin? Heads or tails. If we get three with a spinner, we could get heads or tails with a coin. And if we get four with a spinner, heads or tails with a coin. So these branches show us exactly the outcome. So we could get one and head, we could get one and tail, two and head, two and tail, three and head, three and tail, four and head, and four and tail. So that's exactly eight different outcomes, just like we had in the listing and the table. Now through this, it's very easy to work out the probability of combined events. If I want to find what is the probability of getting a three and heads, then I could go, okay, where is three and heads? That's where it is. So I could go, right, that there is only one outcome like that, that has three and heads. So that would be one out of the eight. So the probability of getting three and heads is one eighth. Or what is the probability of getting even numbers? Okay, either here or here. So I would go, where are the even numbers? We got two H there. So the two is the one that we're looking at. The H or T does not matter. And then we've got a two T. We've got a 4H and a 4T. So obviously this is 4 out of 8 possible outcomes. So 4 out of 8, which is the same as half. So probability of getting even numbers is half. And probability of getting odd numbers then would be again half. Because all the different outcomes add up to one. So that's a half, so you need another half. And if the numbers are not even, they're going to be odd. So half and half gives a whole. So that is equal to one as a decimal or 100% as a percentage. Or I could work out the probability of getting heads. What's the probability of getting heads? We've got one head there. One, two. Three and four. So this is supposed to be a tail. Because we've got two T there. So there are four. So that is four out of eight again. So that gives us half. So probability of getting heads is half. So the probability of getting tails must be half as well because the two halves make a whole. And that's the only two outcomes that we have for the coin. So to summarise, for the independent events, we use systematic listing 
to show all the different outcomes. We use the two-way tables as well and the tree diagram as well. We'll now look at the probability of dependent events. So we've got a spinner here. We'll spin it twice and we'll look at all the different possibilities. When we spin it the second time, we shouldn't get the, the same number that we had the first time around. So if I got a one the first time around, I can't have a one the second time around. So that wouldn't be accepted as an outcome. So what that means is that if I get one the first time, then I could get a two the second time. So a one and I could get a three second time, a one and then I could get a four the second time. So I can't have one and one. And if I get a two the first time round, I can get a one the second time round. I can't have two and two, so I'm gonna have two and three. And I'm going to have two and four. And if I get a three the first time round, I would get a one, three and two, three and four. And four, four and one, four and two, four and three. So these are the possible outcomes. I've listed them. Now we'll look at a two way table. To represent the same information. So let's have first spin. We could have a one, two, three, or four. And the second spin, we could have a one, two, three, or four. So now we can. Draw the table. So, if I get one in the first spin and the and one in the second spin, that's not allowed. So I'll circle it to denote an impossible outcome because that's the rules of the game. And if I get a two, I can have a one, if I get a three, I can have a one, four, I can have a one. So then one and two is perfectly fine. One and three, one and four. And two and two, obviously that's not allowed in the game. Two and three, two and four, three and two, three and three, three and four, four and two, four and three, four and four. So we've shown in this two way table what are the possible outcomes. You could highlight these or cross them out to show that they're not possible. And We'll use now a tree diagram. So with a spinner, we could have one, two, three, or four. Now, if we get one, we won't allow a one, so I won't even do that. We can have a two, we can have a three, we can have a four. If we get a two, we can have a one, we can have a three, we can have a four. Get a three, we can have a one, a two, and a four. If we get a four, we can have a one, two, or three. So, with the tree diagram, we have the possibility to adjust them so we don't include all the numbers. So, we could have a one and two, one and three, one and four, two and one. Two and three, two and four, three and one, three and two, three and four, four and one, four and two, and four and three. 
So these are the possible outcomes using the tree diagram. Now we could answer probably the questions through this. So, for example, what is the probability of getting even numbers only? So, all the even ones. So we go 2 and 4 is 1, because 2 is an even and 4 is an even, and 4 and 2. So that is two possible outcomes out of 1, 2, 3. 3 times 4 is 12. So two 12s, which we can simplify to make 1 sixth, because both of them can be divided by 2. And another question. So what's the probability of at least one of the two numbers being bigger than 2? So at least one of them. That's not the case. That is the case because 3 is bigger than a2. And that is the case. That's not. This is. This is. This is. And this is. This is. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 10 out of one out of the 12 that we had so we don't include the crossed out sections 10 out of the 12 can these be simplified further we could divide by 2 so that gives us 5 and 6 so 5 6 so a final question what's the probability of both of the numbers being the same now, we said it was part of the game or rule of the game that we didn't have numbers that are the same. So that's why when we got a one, we didn't allow to have a second one. Um, so for that reason, you, we don't really have two numbers that are the same in one outcome. So that probability is zero or impossible.